Summer seems to have returned to us in the midst of this fall. Last week it was snowing. Today it's warm enough that we can be outside without a jacket. People are out on the water enjoying this late summer day. And I am delighted to be outside with you so you can see the leaves as they are turning. Cherish the moments that you have because we know the winter comes. A reading from the 25th chapter of the Gospel according to St. Matthew. Jesus said, The kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them. But the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight, there was a shout. Look, here is the bridegroom. Come out to meet him. Then all those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, No, there will not be enough for you and for us. We had better go to, you had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went with him into the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later the other bridesmaids came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, Truly I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. Here ends the reading. Much of the writing in the prophetic books tells us that there are consequences to the choices we make. If we don't treat the poor with compassion or give them aid and dignity, we as a people will suffer. If we don't welcome the stranger and the outcast into our community, remembering that we were once strangers to this land, we as a people will suffer. If we don't prepare for a coming judgment or a crisis or even just a brief moment of emergency, we will suffer. If the people who hear the words of the prophets won't amend their lives and change their direction, they will suffer the consequences of what will be inevitable. And yet again and again, they won't listen. We don't listen. Wise ones and foolish ones. We know what is expected and yet, because it doesn't seem real, we act against our best interest. As I film this, we are in a moment of uncontrolled community spread of the COVID-19 virus in Rhode Island. There's exponential growth beginning to, see, beginning to be seen in the numbers. We are in exponential growth in many states in this nation and all throughout Europe. In the Pacific Rim countries, in Australia, in New Zealand, in Japan, in Singapore, in China, in Vietnam, people did what was asked of them. They wore their masks, they washed their hands, they kept socially distant, they limited their interactions with just a, to just a small group of people and they have this virus under control. Their lives have essentially gone back to normal, albeit with a heightened sense of vigilance. There are localized outbreaks, but they're manageable and they're being managed. Here in the West, we don't seem to be able to do that. And we are going to be suffering the consequences through what it appears to be is going to be a very difficult winter. I don't know why. I don't know why we can't do what's asked of us, why we aren't wearing masks, why we aren't keeping distance, why we aren't washing our hands, why we aren't limiting the number of people we interact with, but we aren't. 
Maybe it's because there is a delay between when people are infected and when the virus fully brews in someone. Maybe it's because not everyone gets desperately sick. Maybe it's because this virus is invisible and it's hard for us to understand. I don't know what it is, but we are living in a denial that somehow we can ignore all this and there won't be any consequences. We're acting in a foolish way. We are not acting like wise people. If we do what is asked, we can bend the curve. Remember being told to bend the curve in the spring? According to the health department here in Rhode Island, if we don't change our behavior now, in about three weeks, we will overwhelm our hospital system. Three weeks, we will overwhelm our hospital system. We'll have to open the field hospitals, and we are going to strain our healthcare professionals in a way that we tried so hard not to do. And we are entering what seems to be the most dangerous part of the year because of the way we behave during the holidays. We're being asked to act like wise ones. And we're being asked not to be foolish. In Canada a few weeks ago, people just desperately wanting to have a sense of normal again. It's been as if we're adrift on a sea of chaos and there's this little island of normal life in Thanksgiving or in a Christmas celebration and people gathered in Canada for their Canadian Thanksgiving and, and I think imagined that it was going to be okay and it has not been. Places in Canada that pretty much had this virus under control are seeing significant spread. Places that already were seeing significant spread are in significant danger. We're about two and a half weeks out from Thanksgiving here in the United States. I've already heard of people trying to figure out how to work around the rules. A club that I belong to, instead of having Thanksgiving available, Thanksgiving dinner available to pick up, has tried to insist they're going to keep their tradition of eating together. And it's not going to work going to put people at risk. Even if they don't think they're sick, they don't know. A small group of teenagers here in Rhode Island gathered together trying to have just a normal high school experience, I imagine, of a party and an overnight sleepover. <sighs> There's 20-some people who are sick as a result. There are hundreds of people in quarantine and multiple school districts have been impacted. One small party just seemed okay. Nobody was sick when they went there. And yet, at least one person was, and that has caused spread. It's going to be a hard Thanksgiving. It's going to be a hard Christmas. I think if we can emotionally prepare ourselves for that, we can manage. We have been through hard Christmases before. People have had Christmases in a time where a family member has died. People have celebrated Christmas overseas in warfare deployments. People have celebrated Christmas when they didn't have money or the ability to gather with their families, and they have gotten through it. And I get that this is awful, and I feel the need to grieve alongside of you. I won't get to sing Christmas carols with all of you. I won't get to celebrate Christmas at an altar. I won't get to have Christmas communion with all of you. It won't be like it always is, and I desperately want it to be that way, because I need it to be that way. And that doesn't matter, because that would be foolish. And the wise thing is to do what we have to do now so that we can get back to normal sooner, as opposed to trying to find a way to make it seem a little bit normal in a few weeks, and it may be a long time before it gets back to normal for any length of time. It's a hard thing, because I imagine that what it feels like is we are being asked to balance our desire to worship God and to gather as people around an altar with our need to care for our neighbor and protect our community. And somehow, we're trying to figure out how to put those two together. And I know it's been hard on the clergy, and I know it's been hard on other denominations 
around the state. And I know it's been hard across the nation. And the people who've imagined that they can just gather because God will protect them. And the clergy who are telling their parishioners, come on in, take off your mask. We're going to sing together. God will protect us. You'll see. And for the first few days or maybe the first few weeks, nothing happens. And then the virus enters the community and it begins to spread. And people are ill and some have died. It's not worth it. If we do what we're asked to do now, it will get better fast. If we don't, it's going to get worse fast. Can we share the oil? Is there something we can do that we don't have to be in a place where only some get into the wedding banquet and others don't? Maybe. Look, if we do what is asked for us, asked of us now, it won't be so bad later on. If we don't do what is asked of us now, it will be much worse for all of us. If we don't know when Jesus will return, but we believe he will, we may not believe we're going to get sick, but, but we don't know. In both these cases, there are things we can do to not be caught unprepared and unready. Jesus summarizes all of the commandments of the law as loving God and loving our neighbor. The two are equivalent. We need to talk about that. Loving God is the same as loving your neighbor. And loving your neighbor is the same as loving God. Acting lovingly towards your neighbors, stopping the spread of an illness that can kill them by denying yourself something that you greatly desire is right now how we serve our neighbor, is how we love our neighbor as ourselves. And if that is how we love our neighbor, then that is how we love God in this moment. Do not mistakenly think that God needs our worship and act in a manner that endangers our neighbor. Do not think God needs our worship and act in a way that endangers our neighbor. It may feel like there's a conflict here, but when we remember what Jesus taught us, there really isn't. Love God by loving your neighbor. Love your neighbor by protecting your community. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, whose blessed Son came into the world that he might destroy the works of the devil and make us children of God and heirs of eternal life, grant that having this hope, we may purify ourselves as he is pure when he comes again with power and great glory, we may be made like him in his eternal and glorious kingdom, where he lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. And now the blessing of the one, holy, undivided Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be upon you this day, this week, and always.